Hi, this is Ron with BridgeCom Systems. I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a personality profile for your BCR repeater. Okay, as you can see, I've got the program open in Windows. And what you want to do is you want to cl click this button here that this is for um, a new system. And in this example, I'm going to do the BCR 40U for the 400 to 470 megahertz range. You'll see a list of all the repeaters that this program will allow for you to program. Also at the same time, you can set a password or leave it blank in the event you don't want to. And in this case, I'm going to leave it blank. So go ahead and click OK. What this brings up at this point is a new template for creating the channels. So what you want to do is left double click on the list view here where it says channel 1 and it'll pop up this screen for the BCR 40 UA. So the channel name is whatever you want to sign it. So you can put your call sign here or anything descriptive about the channel that's being used. For example, uh, amateur radio clubs may put their call sign here or it could be a specific mountaintop. So in this case, I'll just use the town that I'm in, which is Smithville. So I'll type in Smithville. Okay. The next field is the remote access code. This is actually the DTMF sequence so that you can access the repeater as a system operator. And we usually put in a default of 1234. For the sake of this example, I'm just going to use 1234. Now you tab over to the broadcast ID. This is the area where you put the station ID for what will be sent out over the air in Morse code. This is usually your FCC identifier that, it, that you have on your license, or it could be the club call sign. Uh, what I'm going to put is uh, my club, or well, me, my personal uh, amateur radio license, which is KC0QVT. You can also put a forward slash R if you want to indicate repeater, but that's not necessary. I'll leave that blank. Then uh, the broadcast interval is how often you want the repeater to update, okay? And you can see this hint pops up when you put the cursor over there, and that tells you 0 to 99, 999 minutes, and 0 disables. So I'm going to put this at every 10 minutes. I want the station ID to go out at 20 words per minute, okay? And then the next uh, entry is what's called the broadcast activity independent. Now, if you want the ID to go out every 10 minutes, regardless of channel activity, you wanna check this box, okay? If you only want it to go out when there's been activity within the last 10 minute window of time, uncheck that, okay? So if I check that, I know that my ID is going out every 10 minutes no matter what, okay? So I'll leave it like that. Tab down to the receiver frequency, and in this example, I'm going to set up my re receive frequency of 449.5 megahertz, okay? Now, you'll note that I tab down in the channel spacing, and you'll see that the 25 kilohertz is grayed out. Okay, once I go over here to the transmit section and get into the amateur radio, that'll uh, become available. So I'll tab over to here. I don't want to set up this as a CSQ repeater, and what that means is if I, I'll repeat whenever I get a carrier. Okay, I'll get back to that here in a moment. Okay, so I tab over here, my COS settings. I want the COS to assert based on a valid subaudible tone or PL decode. So I'm going to check, make sure that radio button's checked. Okay, so I'll tab over here, and given that the uh, transmitter's five megahertz away, I'm going to set this up at 444.5, okay? Now, real quick, I'll go back over. You see that the 25 kilohertz channel spacing was now checked. You can still go over here to 12 and a half, but since you, for, for amateur radio, you can do 25. But you can't do 25 kilohertz in the commercial section, which this repeater can do as well. Okay, so the power setting is a level from 0 to 990, 995. Now, this number doesn't indicate a power setting, like for example, 100 equals 10 watts, 200 equals 20 watts. This is an arbitrary number between 0 and 995. 
Uh, I want 40 watts on my repeater. I don't really know what that's going to be on a 40 watt repeater of ours. So I'm just going to put a starting point of 400. And then what I'll do when I go to align the repeater uh, after programming this in, I'll go ahead and tweak that value. But that's a starting point. Okay, and the next section is the pre-emphasis. And I want that on so that my audio has a pre-emphasis on the output. So it sounds nice and crisp, well-rounded. Okay, tab, tab down and I'm at the TX timeout time. This is the amount of time the repeater will transmit before keying down. Right now it's at 240 seconds, so that means it's going to stay keyed or could stay keyed for four minutes before turning off. A lot of times people want it for three minutes and I'll put it at three minutes, which is 180 seconds. The courtesy tone delay is the amount of time after the loss of decode that the repeater will wait before emitting a courtesy tone. As you can see, zero disables this feature the values can be ranged up to 65,535 milliseconds. A lot of times people want this to be around 600 milliseconds. Sometimes people don't. But what that does is that waits for any call that came in. The repeater will key down the transmitter, wait 600 milliseconds, and then that gives the opportunity for the caller that just emitted to turn around and receive the courtesy tone. Some clubs like that. Some people like that. That way they know that they got into the repeater. Otherwise, the repeater will send the courtesy tone immediately after loss of decode and the calling party won't hear the courtesy tone. This is all about how, uh, what people want. It's, it's sort of a customization uh, depending on what they're used to and it's something that can be played around with. So I'll leave it at 600 milliseconds. Okay, the cooling fan is TX only so the fans will come on when it's transmitting or it could be set for continuous. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and press okay and close that out. Now, what immediately pops up is the array of user slots, which can be from one to 24, including a system operator. The repeater is a community repeater, meaning it can decode and encode multiple subaudible tones. But for the sake of this example, I'm going to set up a system operator and a user. So let's start with the user, and you do that by left double clicking on the list there. So what I'll do is I'll click 100 hertz since I want 100 hertz tone. I want it active. I'm going to tab over here, find 100, and then I'm going to go over here to the transmit side and set this for 100 as well. I want 100, 1000 hertz courtesy tone, and I want the channel the whole time to be a, th a second. So I'll put 1000 milliseconds. Okay, now. The next entry is the t include the tone and tail. What this is, is this means that if this box is checked, this 100 hertz will be included along with the tail for the 1000 milliseconds, the 100 hertz will be in the hang time. So you'll stay unmuted on your handheld until the 1000 milliseconds. If this is not checked, what happens when the call's over, the repeater will stay keyed up for 1000 milliseconds without the subaudible tone in the in the ent in the uh, hang time. So most people like this off, but it leaves the repeater transmitter keyed up for a, a second after the call's over. And this is something that can be played around with, but for the most part, if this is turned off, there's no tone in the tail. So I'll do that, and now I'll click on the system operator. Now the system operator is exclusive for let's say the the club trustee or the uh, owner of the repeater that wants to manage it. And this is the signaling that is used for remotely managing the repeater with the remote IDs, the remote DTMF commands. So I'll just set this up for 67 hertz. Okay. And 250 milliseconds is pretty good. I don't care about a courtesy tone in this point, and I don't need a tone in the tail. Okay. So this is all set up. And now you can see I've got this list view of the name of the repeater, the frequencies, channel spacing, power level, broadcast ID, Morse code rate, and words per minute, and the remote ID. And then I'll click down on the, and then you, on the Smithville entry, and you can see that there's two entries, one for the system operator and one for the overall usage of the repeater. Now keep in mind the system operator is 
any call that comes in on that particular tone will not be repeated and that's by design okay so you go up here and you can save the file and usually you want to save it as the name of your uh, channel that saves that okay all right once you're done you'll go to dump this into the repeater and that pulls up the uh, program repeater by clicking that button there the uh, the computer down arrow into the repeater and then you press start you want to find your com port and you can do that okay well that explains how to use this uh, program it's pretty simple if you have any questions uh, feel free to email tech support at bridgecomsystems.com and we're here to serve you we thank you for watching have a great day.